the Malayan water monitor. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but it's not fun practicing alone. Why don't we swim together? You go first, Hero. Wow, you're a natural hero. Maybe I should try it your way. Ah, it's a crocodile. There's a small crocodile in the pool. Boy, that was scary. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Katie, a small crocodile slipped into our pool. Leo, don't panic. That animal is not a crocodile. Are you sure? Of course. Why don't you come over and I'll tell you more. All right, I'm coming up. Hero, you stay here and keep watch, okay? I'll be right back. <laughs> come on, everybody. Let's go into the treehouse. Katie, so if it's not a crocodile, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a water monitor. There are different types of water monitors, and the one in our pool is a Malayan water monitor. I see. Still, it sure looks like a crocodile. It's easy to mistake water monitors for crocodiles, especially when they're in the water. But if you look closely, they're quite different. Water monitors have a shorter snout and a longer, thinner tail as compared to crocodiles. But, like crocodiles, water monitors are often found near water and are excellent swimmers. This is because the long, powerful tails of water monitors are used to propel them through the water. Wow! Maybe I should learn how to improve my swimming from a water monitor. <laughs> Don't get too close, though. Water monitors will defend themselves if they feel threatened. I see. So, what kind of food do water monitors eat? They eat small animals, fish, and birds. But if they want to, they can eat anything they can swallow. Yikes! I don't think the water monitor belongs here. What if it eats all the animals in our garden? Well, Normally, Malayan water monitors don't live in gardens. They live in forests in different countries in South and Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I think we should return the water monitor to its natural home in the forest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. I'm sure the water monitor would be happy to go back home. See you downstairs. Turn for lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Ranger Rocky! Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a young water monitor with you. How can you tell it's young, Ranger Rocky? This water monitor is smaller than an adult water monitor. Adult water monitors usually grow to a length of about two and a half to three meters. Now, take a closer look at its body. Young water monitors have special markings on their bodies and are more colorful than the adults. As they grow older, the markings fade. I see. Ranger Rocky, we're trying to return the water monitor to its home. Do you know where we should look? If you want to find the water monitor's home, look for the banks of a large river. Though water monitors are land creatures, they can climb trees. And they are amazing swimmers. So water monitors usually live near river banks. They dig burrows at the water's edge to rest and hide from predators. Good luck, Junior Rangers. 
Thank, Thank you, you Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Let's see what we can find. Here is a small stream surrounded by rocks. And on this side is a large river. Do you know where we should go? Over there is a small stream surrounded by rocks. And over there is a large river. So where should we go? There? That's right! We need to go to the banks of a large river where water monitors prefer to dig their burrows. Let's go! Hmm, there are too many rocks on this bank for the water monitor to dig its home. Look, Leo! What about the bank on the other side? Hmm, that looks like a good place, Katie. There aren't as many rocks over there. Come on, everyone, let's go over there. Here we go. Whoa! Leo, the float is losing air. What's happening, Hero? Let me take a look. A large fishing hook pierced the float. We need to get the hook out and fix the float. Leave the fishing hook to me, Leo. Good luck, Katie. There. But we're losing a lot of air. If we don't fix the float, the Jeep will sink. We have to cover the hole. What can we use? The water monitor covered the hole by sitting on it. Thanks, water monitor. Great. Let's head to the riverbank. We made it. Good work, water monitor. So, what should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. If you want to find the water monitor's home, just look by the water's edge. Not by a window ledge or a winter sledge, but look by the water's edge. I see. So not by a window ledge or a winter sledge, but, but look, look by, by the, the water's, water's edge. edge. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the water monitor's home, you have to look by the water's edge. Good luck. Okay, Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be the water monitor's home. Could that be the water monitor's home? Hmm, this home belongs to those weird-looking creatures. So let's continue. There's a burrow. Is this the water monitor's home? The size of this burrow is too small. This is an otter's home. Let's move on. Is that the water monitor's home? This burrow is empty. It seems like a good place. Great work, Hero. We're coming over. Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the water monitor's home. Great job, everyone. Yay! Yay! Today, we found a Malayan water monitor in our garden. We learned that water monitors live in forests where they build their homes near water. So we went to a riverbank in the forest and found its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. The Equatorial Spitting Cobra. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. I wonder where that frog is going. Let's follow it too.
Careful, hero. You'll scare the frog away. Huh? Something else is hidden inside the bush? Ah, a snake! Better keep a distance, hero. It's a snake in our garden. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Yikes! Katie, where are you? We found a snake in the garden. Hi, Leo. Oh, wow. It seems to be some kind of cobra. You can tell by the flap of skin that spread out near its head. A cobra? Can you find more information about it? Leave it to me. Great. I'm coming up. Hero, you stay here and keep your distance from the snake, okay? I'll be right back. <coughs> Come on, everybody. Let's go into the treehouse. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cobra you found is an equatorial spitting cobra, also known as a black spitting cobra. It is called a spitting cobra because it is able to shoot venom from its fangs. Venom is a toxin, like poison, and is found in some animals such as cobras. Venom can be passed to a person or another animal through a bite or sting. Many cobras defend themselves by injecting venom through their bite. But a spitting cobra prefers to spit or spray venom at a predator's eyes to scare them away. The spitting cobra wiggles its head the same way your eyes move. This helps the cobra's aim when it sprays its venom. That's scary! Actually, spitting cobras are shy animals. They only attack when they feel threatened. Still, equatorial spitting cobras can shoot venom up to three meters away. So it's best to keep your distance. I'll make sure to remember that, Katie. Equatorial spitting cobras live in different forests in Southeast Asia, where they eat small animals like lizards, frogs, and rats. Hmm. I don't think it's safe for us to be near the spitting cobra. We should return the cobra to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go. For lots of fun and lots to learn. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a special friend with you today. Here, you'll need these if you're going to be near that spitting cobra. Glasses? Safety glasses, Leo. The venom from spitting cobras can harm your eyes. That's why it's very important to wear these glasses for protection. When threatened, the spitting cobra will aim to shoot its venom at an enemy's eyes. The venom that the spitting cobra sprays causes pain to the eyes and sometimes blindness. You will know when you've gotten too close to a cobra when it flares the flap of skin around its head and neck. This flap of skin is called a hood. A cobra will spread its hood when it feels threatened. I see. We'll be careful not to get too close to the cobra. We're trying to find the spitting cobra's home. Do you know where we should look? Spitting cobras like to live near water, in burrows or under rocks, where they can hunt for food. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Ranger Rocky. Let's see what we can find. Here is an open field with some trees. And on this side are rocks and trees near a stream. Do you know where we should go? Over there is an open field with some trees. And over there are rocks and trees near a stream. 
So where should we go? There? That's right! We need to go to the place near a stream because spitting cobras can hunt for food near water. Let's go! What's wrong with the cobra? The spitting cobra is getting into its offensive pose. Why does it keep flicking its tongue? Spitting cobras have a very good sense of smell. They use their tongues to pick up scents in the air. Do you think it might have picked up the scent of a predator? <laughs> they don't look very friendly. They are mongooses. It says here that the mongoose is the cobra's natural predator. Did you see that? The cobra sprayed venom at that mongoose, but the mongoose looks fine. It says here the mongoose is resistant or immune to cobra venom. That means cobra venom has no effect on the mongoose. What do we do now? We're surrounded. I'll clear a path for us. Thanks, Katie. Hold on tight, everyone. Phew, that was close. What should we look for now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. If you want to find the spitting cobra's home, just look for a hole near a stream. Not for a red laser beam or a bucket of ice cream, but look for a hole near a stream. I see. So not for a red laser beam or a bucket of ice cream, but, but look, look for, for a, a hole near, near a, stream. a stream. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find the spitting cobra's home, you have to look for a hole near a stream. Good luck! Hero, there are a few dots on your radar. One of them might be the Spitting Cobra's home. Could this be the Spitting Cobra's home? Mm, this hole already belongs to an owl. Carry on, Hero. Is this log the Spitting Cobra's home? No, another animal lives inside. Let's continue. What's this? There's a stream, and there's an empty hole under a rock. This seems like a good home for the Cobra. Great work, Hero. We're coming over. Goodbye, little friend. We did it! We found the Spitting Cobra's home! Great job, everyone! Yay! We found an equatorial Spitting Cobra in our garden! We learned that the spitting cobra can spray venom when threatened. That's why it's best to keep a safe distance from the spitting cobra. So we went to the forest and brought it to its natural home, far away from other humans. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. The Green Iguana. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Those are juggling balls, Hero. Check me out. Can you pass me another ball, Hero? Thank you. This is getting difficult. Ah! Oh dear, let's find those balls, Hero. It's a lizard. Whoa, that's a strong tail. I wonder what kind of lizard it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, lizard. 
Hi, Katie. I just sent you a photo of a lizard we found in our garden. Hi, Leo. Wow, its skin is so green. Can you find more information about it? Of course I can. Great. See you soon. Hero, you watch over our new friend. I'll be right back. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Let's go into the treehouse. Katie, so what did you find about the lizard? Hi, Leo. This lizard is a green iguana, also known as the common iguana. Some green iguanas come in different colors, and they can change their color when they get older. The green iguana you found is still young. An adult iguana can grow up to two meters long. Green iguanas are herbivores. They feed on leafy green plants, flowers, and fruits. Green iguanas can be found in rainforests of Central, South America, and the Caribbean. Green iguanas like to spend most of their time in trees. When they are high up in the tree, they can enjoy the sunlight. Sunlight helps them control their body temperature. Then we should bring our new friend back to the trees in the rainforest. Come and join us. The green iguana would love that, Leo. See you downstairs. Come on, everybody. Join me in this party. One, two, here we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Come on, everybody. Join me in this party. One, two, it's your turn for lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two. We go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Ranger Rocky! Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the rainforest. What did you find in your garden this time? Ah, a green iguana. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We want to return it to its natural home. We found out that green iguanas like to be high up on a tree. Correct, Katie. The coloring of their bodies helps them to blend into the trees. However, iguanas still have to keep a constant lookout for predators, like hawks, eagles, or snakes. On top of having excellent eyesight to do just that, green iguanas also have a third eye. The third eye of the green iguana is right on top of the iguana's head. It's also known as the parietal eye. The third eye does not see as normal eyes do but it can sense movement and change of light. The third eye is particularly useful when iguanas are looking out for hawks and eagles that fly above them. What happens when green iguanas encounter their predators? Green iguanas can put up a good fight with their long tails, sharp teeth, and spines on their bodies. Their dewlaps can be raised to make themselves look bigger, too. Unfortunately, Green iguanas face other threats. People like to keep them as pets, but most people don't know how to take proper care of them. Many iguanas in captivity die within a year due to a lack of sunlight or proper food. The green iguana belongs on branches high up in the trees, where it can receive enough sunlight and find food to eat. To find branches that are high enough for plenty of sunlight, you have to go deeper into the rainforest. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Let's see what we can find. Here is a patch of short grass. And on this side are branches high up in trees. Do you know where we should go? Over there is a patch of short grass. And over there are branches high up in trees. So where should we go? There? That's right. We need to go to the branches that are high up in trees because green iguanas need to get enough sunlight. Let's go. I think this is a good spot for the green iguana. Enjoy, iguana. Let's hope this is the right place for it. <laughs> Look up there, Leo. It's a hawk, one of the green iguana's predators. 
Why is the green iguana not running away? Green iguanas blend well into their surroundings. They will stay very still until a predator passes them by. <laughs> it's too late! Let's use our propellers and distract the hawk. Oh, no! Great move, green iguana! Its tail came off. Now let's get away from here. Poor iguana. Don't worry, Leo. Sometimes green iguanas drop their tails when they are trying to escape from a predator. This might help them get away. The iguana will even grow a new tail. Really? That's great to hear, Katie. Where should we go now? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger Rocky! Green iguanas like to be near water, so they can easily jump into it to escape from predators. So if you want to find a home for the green iguana, just look for a tree branch that hangs above water. Not for a playful otter or a farmer's daughter, but look for a tree branch that hangs above water. I see. So not for a playful otter, or a farmer's daughter, but, but look, look for a tree, tree branch that, that hangs above water. water. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Hero, to find a home for the green iguana, you have to look for a tree branch that hangs above water. Good luck. <laughs> Hero, there are a few dots in your radar. One of them might be a home for the green iguana. Is this a good home for the iguana? It's a branch, but it's above the ground. Let's move on. Is this a tree branch that hangs above water? Hmm, no. These are vines in a tree. So let's continue. What is this? It's a tree branch that hangs above water. You did it, Hero. We're coming over. We found the green iguana's home. Great work, everybody. Yay! Yay! a green iguana in our garden. We learned that green iguanas like to stay high up in trees to enjoy the sunlight. We also learned that green iguanas like to live near water. So when there's danger, they can escape by jumping into the water. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Mission accomplished. I don't see them anywhere. They're not here either, Leo. <laughs> Got it. Thanks, guys. Still no sign of any Galapagos tortoises, Ranger Rocky. Okay, Leo. Just keep looking. According to my records, there's supposed to be 13 tortoises on your island. We should aim to count and log all of them by sundown. Roger that, Ranger Rocky. We'll continue looking and keep you updated. Ranger out. Ranger out. The tortoises might be on another part of the island. Good point, Katie. Let's keep searching. Where's Peo? <laughs> what are you doing, Peo? I'm looking for the tortoises. <laughs> you won't find any under there. The Lapagos tortoises are huge. Really? How big can a tortoise be? Oh! That big! Whoa! It's huge! It looks like you found one, Peyo. Let's find out for sure. I've just sent you its photo, Katie. Can you check it out? I'm already on it. Let's see. It's indeed a Galapagos tortoise. 
They are the world's largest tortoises and can weigh more than a fridge. Their shells are not solid and are made up of honeycomb structures that hold small air chambers. This makes the shell lighter and easier for the tortoise to carry. The shell also protects it from predators. Galapagos tortoises can live to about a hundred years. Whoa, a hundred years? <sighs> what was that? <laughs> Hero! Pika! Look happy either. I think they're fighting. Do you think they're fighting over those fruits? Hmm. A green apple? Stop! What is it? What's wrong? Don't touch that! Step away from the fruit! That's the fruit of the manchineel tree! The most dangerous tree in the world! All parts of it are poisonous! Phew! That was close. Thanks, Peo. <gasps> are they harmful to tortoises? Nope. Galapagos tortoises actually eat those poisonous apples. Eeks! What can we do to stop them from fighting? I've got an idea. Ready, Hero? Let's lure them away from each other. Careful not to touch the fruit, guys! Please be extra careful. Don't worry, we'll be careful. All right, Hero, let's do this. Three, two, one, go! Over here, Tortoise! It's working! Slow and steady! Well done, buddy! Here you go! Huh? Hero, stop teasing it! Just give it the fruit! There, buddy. Over here, guys. We have to flip it back on its feet. On the count of three, let's flip it together. Ready? Ready! Ready. <laughs> One, two, three. Flip it over! <laughs> Almost! Almost. <sighs> oh. <sighs> it's so heavy. Oh, hi, Ranger Rocky. How's it going over there, Leo? Found any Galapagos tortoises yet? Yes, we have. But one of them flipped over on its shell. Oh, dear. That sounds like a tricky situation. Galapagos tortoises have two main shell shapes, domed and saddleback. Some are shaped in between the two extremes. Domed tortoises have rounder shells and shorter necks. Saddleback tortoises have flatter shells with a raised neck opening resembling a saddle, as well as longer necks and limbs. Do you need my help, Junior Rangers? Nope. We got this, Ranger Rocky. We'll figure it out on our own. All right. I better get back to counting tortoises then. Keep me posted, and good luck. Ranger out. Ranger out. <laughs> Hang in there, buddy. We'll flip you over in no time. We're too weak to lift it on our own, but maybe we can use something to help us. Hmm. Aha! I knew just the thing. I hope this works. I'm sure it will. Ready, everyone? Ready! Ready. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one, go! Ranger Rocky. Are you all right, Leo? Just checking in on the situation with the tortoise. We just had a bit of a setback, but we're all okay. Are you sure? I'd be happy to come over to help. 
Thanks, Ranger Rocky. But we got this. Right, Rangers? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. All the best. Ranger out. Ranger out. Does anyone have any other ideas? We need to get stronger. Or maybe we just need a better log. Hmm. Less energy will be needed if we use a longer log. It's basic science. All right. Now that we've got science on our side, let's try this again. Jetpack activate. activate. Three, two, one, go. Uh, it's working. You're a genius, Katie. Whoa. No. It's no use. We need help. Maybe we should call Ranger Rocky. Never give up, Peo. There's got to be another way. We don't have to depend on Ranger Rocky all the time. I'm sure we can do this, Rangers. I have an idea that just might work. Ta-da! Oh, wow! Cool! All right, everyone grab the rope. Ready? Ready! Ready. <laughs> this is going to work for sure. Three, two, one, pull! Uh, almost there! Uh, Leo, the rope! <gasps> Jetpack activate! Leave it to me! Got it! Time. Ranger Rocky, we did it! We flipped the tortoise back on its feet. And we did it all by ourselves. Amazing work, Junior Rangers. Well done. No more fighting. It's time to settle this once and for all. May the best tortoise win. Ready, set, go! Come on, tortoises. Juicy, non-poisonous apples await you. Go, go, go! 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 Go, go, go! Mission accomplished. I'm glad we managed to help the tortoise back on its feet. And the tortoise race was so much fun. Yeah, right, Hero? Huh, where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Hero! <laughs> is he trying to be a tortoise? Good job, children. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Jane! Zumi! Wait for us! I thought this was a hike, not a run. I think this is Jane's version of a hike. Hero, you couldn't catch up either, huh? Leo, Katie, are you two all right? Yep, all good. <laughs> Time for a break? Yes, please. Follow me. I know a nice spot up ahead. We are here. Wow, where does this river lead to, Jane? Hmm, I am not sure. Huh? Guys, look! A pink lizard! What a cool color for a lizard! But lizards aren't pink. Do you think it's sick? What if it has a fever? Let's not jump to conclusions, Leo. <laughs> You're right. Smile! I've sent you its photo, Katie. Can you find out more about it? I'm already on it. Oh! It's not your average lizard. It's a panther chameleon. Panther chameleons can change the color of their skin. They can blend in with their surroundings to camouflage themselves. The chameleons mostly change colors to reflect their mood, communicate with other chameleons, and to warm up or cool down. Oh, so it isn't sick after all. It just changed its color to pink. Yep, panther chameleons prefer to live on their own and can get aggressive towards other chameleons invading their home. 
Males will become more vibrant in color when competing with other males. I'm glad you're okay, little fella. Hey, it's another chameleon. Uh-oh. Look, it is blue now. <gasps> Why are they fighting? <gasps> they both want the same tree. But there are plenty of trees around. There's no need to fight. Come here now. See, it's the same over here. Huh? I think it really wants this tree. What should we do now, Leo? Here's an idea. What if we host a friendly competition for them? Whoever wins gets the tree fair and square. No fighting. Awesome! Sounds fun. The pink one will win for sure. I disagree. The blue one looks like a winner. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Game on! <clears throat> Chameleons, here are the rules. Round one. The chameleon that changes the most colors in one minute wins. All right. According to my calculations, you can change colors at least three times within that time limit. So, if we stick to that, you should be able to win this. You got this, my friend. May the best chameleon win. Ready, set, go. Yes, mine is yellow now. Come on, don't just stay blue. Turn green, anything. And now he is bright red. No! Three, two, one. Time's up. And the winner of round one is the pink, no, red chameleon. Yay! <sighs> it's all right. We'll win the next round. But what's next? Let's see. According to my research, chameleons have eyes that can move in two directions at the same time. Hmm, fascinating. They also have very sticky tongues. Their tongues can be twice as long as their bodies when stretched out to catch insects. Cool. That gives me a tongue-tastic idea. Ready for round two? The first chameleon who catches the spider with its long sticky tongue wins. Challenge accepted. But you'll have to find it first. You can do this. I believe in you. Three, two, one, go. Come and get it. Over there. Oh, it's right there. Almost. So close! Yes! Now! Oops! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! They're fighting again! Uh-oh! <laughs> Everyone to Platypus 1! Junior Rangers to the rescue! Platypus 1! There's the red one! Roger that! Got it! You are safe now! The blue one is just up ahead! Hurry, Leo! It's drifting away! All right! Hang on, everyone! Jane, how's the red chameleon doing? It is... <gasps> Gone! It fell into the river again. What? what? Zumi was shocked when it grabbed her tail. Maybe the chameleon thought Zumi's tail was a branch. Um, we've got another problem. <gasps> oh no! Let's split off. Katie and Hero, you guys go after the red chameleon. Jane, Zumi, and I will follow the blue one. Got it! Jetpack, activate! We got this. Coming for you! Just a little closer. Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky? Rocky? What are you doing here? There's a fish trapped in a plastic bag upstream. 
I'm headed there to rescue it. And what are you guys up to? We're trying to rescue a panther chameleon that fell into the water. Oh dear, they're not known to be strong swimmers. Well, luckily it's clinging onto a piece of driftwood. Yes, panther chameleons are great grabbers. They have large toes on their hands and feet, as well as a prehensile tail that helps them cling onto branches. I have to go help the fish now. I trust you rangers to rescue the chameleon. See you around. Bye, Bye Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Onwards. The red chameleon has to be here somewhere. Do you see it, Hero? Wait for me, Hero. Strange. We followed the river all the way downstream, but where's the blue chameleon? Leo, do you think it might have drowned? Don't worry, I'm sure it's all right. We'll find it. I know we will. Oh, good job, Hero. There you are. You're safe now. There's some driftwood up ahead. Let's see if it's there. Hey, guys. Look who we found. Welcome back. Did you find the blue communion? Nope, but it has to be here somewhere. Let's just continue to look. Got it, Leo. I found it! Oh, false alarm. It's all right. Keep at it, Rangers. Huh? What's wrong? Are you trying to tell me something? <gasps> it's over here! The red chameleon found its buddy! Oh, yeah, I see it. You know, chameleons turn a darker shade when they're stressed out. Aww. There you go. Home sweet home. They are friends now. No more fighting. Mission accomplished. I'm glad the chameleons became friends. Huh? Hero? <laughs> Hero? Today, he wants to be pink. <laughs> I guess that's another way to change color. Good job, children. You are amazing wildlife rangers. This new birdhouse is going to be great, Katie. Just one more piece and it's done. But I'm all out of planks. Hero, would you fetch me one? <laughs> Not that one. That's too big. That's too small. Perfect. Good boy, Hero. Be careful, Leo. There, all done. Huh? Why did it fly away? Is there something wrong with our birdhouse? I thought birds like birdhouses. Oh, hi, Junior Ranger Farah. What's up? Hi, Leo. I'm at the Komodo National Park, and I found the most amazing thing ever. What did you find, Farah? An egg. Huh? An egg? Here's a photo of it. Do you know which bird laid the egg? Hmm. It looks like a chicken egg. But I compared it with photos in my handbook, and the egg I found is different. It's bigger than a chicken egg. How exciting! I'm sure we can find out more on the computer. Great! See you later, hero! <laughs> Let's see what type of bird laid the egg. That's not a bird at all. It's the egg of a Komodo dragon. A dragon? Farah found a dragon egg? It's not really a dragon, Leo. Komodo dragons are the largest lizards in the world. They can be found on the many islands in Komodo National Park in Indonesia. Komodo dragons lay about 30 eggs in their nests. But I only found one egg. And it was on the ground with no nest in sight. Oh, no. Was the egg separated from its nest? <gasps> we have to return it. Don't worry, Farah. We'll be right over to help. 
Okay, see you guys soon. Ranger out. Ranger out. All right, let's return the Komodo dragon's egg to its nest. It'll be exciting to visit an island full of dragons. You know they aren't real dragons, Leo. See you downstairs. Ranger Leo all set. Woohoo! <laughs> Junior Rangers to the rescue! Platypus One, activate! Here, Here we, we go! go. Huh? Uh-oh, something's happening. <gasps> it hatched. Ah, it's so cute. Hello, baby Komodo dragon. <laughs> I'm sure its mother will be looking for it. We have to find its nest quick. <laughs> huh? What's wrong, hero? Whoa, a dragon. A Komodo dragon. Is that its mother? Let's take the baby over to her. Stop. I would not do that if I were you. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Hello, Junior Rangers. My, my, that is one cute baby lizard. Why did you stop me from returning the baby Komodo dragon, Ranger Rocky? We do not know for sure if that adult Komodo dragon is its mom. Besides, Komodo dragons do not take care of their young. In fact, adult Komodo dragons are often a danger to young Komodo dragons. Adult Komodo dragons are also venomous. You should be careful not to get bitten. If you do, you should see a doctor and get medical attention right away. Get medical attention right away. It looks like it's up to us to find a home for the baby Komodo dragon. Let's take it away before the adult sees us. Too late! Now there were three of them, and they're coming right for us! Oh no! Hurry, Junior Rangers! Take the baby and go! I'll distract them! Got it, Ranger Rocky! Easy. Easy. Look at how pretty and pink this sand is! This must be Pink Beach. It says here that the pink color comes from small bits of broken pink and red coral. When mixed with the white sand, the beach looks pink. It's really beautiful here. But is it the right place for the baby Komodo dragon? It seems safe and warm enough, but I don't think there's anything for it to eat. We'll have to find a better spot then. At least Hero's having fun with our new friend. Komodo dragon! I'll find it! Where is it? Aha! Found it! It's over there! Komodo dragons are strong swimmers. They can even swim between the different islands in the park. I guess there's nothing to worry about. The baby Komodo dragon can swim back to us. But I don't think the baby is very good at swimming yet. Huh? What's that? Oh no! Not another one! Hero, you save the baby. I'll distract the big one. Jetpack, activate! Wait! It's too dangerous! Be careful, you two! Hey, big guy! Look over here! We got them, Leo! Go fetch! Phew, that was close. That was a very dangerous thing to do, Leo. According to our Junior Rangers pledge, I will wait for assistance from a fellow Ranger when there's danger. Well, my fellow Ranger, Hero was assisting me. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just glad everyone is all right. 
Now we just need to find a safe place for our little friend here. Ranger Rocky, are you all right? I sure am, Leo. I forgot to mention that a safe place for a baby Komodo dragon would be high up in the trees, where the adults can't reach them. Preferably a tree with insects for it to eat. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome, Leo. Ranger out. Bye, Ranger Rocky. Ranger out. We should find somewhere safe with trees and insects for the baby Komodo dragon. Oh, I know a place like that. Follow me. I found this place while scouting the island. There are plenty of trees around and it's really peaceful here. Best of all, there are insects in the trees. What do you think, Hero? Will this be a good place for our new friend? The baby Komodo dragon seems to like the tree. I think our new friend will be very happy here. We did it! We brought the baby Komodo dragon to safety. Mission accomplished. We had quite an adventure today, traveling to a mysterious island and battling dragons. Komodo dragons! Right. I'm glad we managed to find a safe home for the baby Komodo dragon. <coughs> What's the matter, hero? <coughs> Birds are visiting our birdhouse now. Like the baby Komodo dragons, the birds feel safer now that the birdhouse is higher up. Are you making new friends again, Hero? <laughs> Good job, children. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Uh, 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 it's too high up. I can't reach it. Thanks, Pico. These are acai berries. They're great for your health. Mm -mm. And they're pretty tasty, too. Do you want some more? Here. Now, let's see what else is growing around here. Oh, that flower! It's beautiful! I've never seen anything like it. We have to learn more about it. Let's take it back with us. Wait, Pico. I'll get it this time. Look at those thorns and vines. They'll hurt you. You wait here, okay? You can do this, Pello. Just a little more. Whoa! to get down from here. Hmm. You know, Pico, some of these vines look and feel kind of funny. See? This one almost looks like a... <gasps> snake! And a big one, too! I've gotta get down! No, Pico! Stay! It's dangerous up here! Slowly now... <gasps> huh? What? Ranger Leo speaking. Huh? Pico, is that you? Where's Peo? Are you in the Amazon rainforest? What's going on, Leo? I'm not sure, Katie. It's Pico. Pico? Wait, do you hear that? It sounds like somebody's talking. Huh? Something's not right. Send me the video, Leo. I'll see if I can isolate the voice and amplify its volume. Sure thing, Katie. And... Done! Pico, 
tell them that I'm stuck in a tree? And there's a big green snake right in front of me. I can't get down. Uh-oh. If we zoom in and unblur it... <gasps> Peo! Green snake. Hmm, they're not that big. Can we look at the video again? Some of the vines look a little funny. Just have to do a quick scan. <gasps> a green anaconda? Oh no! Peo is stuck in a tree with an anaconda. We've got to get him down quick. We can find out more information about the animal on the way there. I got his location. See you downstairs. Ranger Leo all set. Woohoo! <laughs> Junior Rangers to the rescue! Platypus One, activate! Here, Here we, go. we go! So, what do we know about the green anaconda? Let's see. The green anaconda is the world's largest snake. Anacondas are constrictors. They coil themselves around their prey and squeeze them. With their stretchy jaws, anacondas open their mouths wide to swallow their prey whole. Once they've eaten a big meal, they can go for weeks or months without food. Oh boy, we'd better hurry. He should be around here somewhere. Peyo! Pico! Where are you? <laughs> what is it, Hero? Look, it's Peyo's bag. Pico! Where's Peyo? Is he okay? Over here! I'm over here! Whoa, it's huge! Boy, am I glad to see you guys! Look what I found! A flower! Don't worry, Peo. We'll get you down. Cool! Also, can you hand me my bag? I have to keep these precious flowers safe. Sure thing, Peo. Quietly now. Jetpack Jet activate. activate! Here you go, Peo. Thanks, Leo. Now grab hold of us. Oh, no! Oh, oh, never mind me. Just take this somewhere safe. We mustn't let anything happen to the flower. Oh, no! Don't worry, Peo. I'll get it. And I'll find a way to get you down. We leave no rangers behind. Huh? Oh! Well, that was easy. Where's it going? Oh, no! Guys! No! Not the bug! Now we'll never get the flower back! Hang on, Peo. Let's get you down first. Huh? Pico! No! You'll get hurt! No, Hero! Hero! The anaconda's way too strong for them. Katie, help me grab its tail. Stop right there. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Back away from the tail. What you're about to do is very dangerous. Tangling with an anaconda is a dangerous thing to do. Anacondas are big and strong but they usually only attack humans when they feel threatened. If you mess around with its tail, it might see that as a threat. Green anacondas may move slowly on land, but they're great in water. They're fast swimmers, and because their eyes and nostrils are on the top of their heads, they can breathe and see even when most of their body is underwater. What do we do then, Ranger Rocky? We have to get my bag! No worries, Peo. I'll take it from here. Leave this to the experts, children. What's he going to do? I have no idea, but I'm sure Ranger Rocky has an awesome plan. Now, now. I don't want any trouble, but I'm going to need that bag. Oh, no you don't. Calm down now. <gasps> Ranger! It's constricting him! Are you sure you don't need us to do anything, Ranger Rocky? Uh, nope. I have it all under control. Aha! Catch! My bag! Phew, it's all right. 
It's getting kind of squeezy. Time to get out of here. Be back in a second, Junior Rangers. Oh, Ranger Rocky! Oh, no! Ranger Rocky! Ah! Ah! Ranger Rocky, you're okay. I sure am. That was amazing. But weren't you scared of the Anaconda, Ranger Rocky? It's huge! There was no need to be scared. Anacondas are not out to hurt people. The anaconda was just defending itself. Ranger Rocky is right. We're the ones who entered its home. Well, I've learned my lesson. Never approach or provoke an anaconda when you see one. Always take a tree before you climb it. You never know what's living in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. I'm glad we managed to save Peo from that anaconda. That was one big snake. Yeah, if I ever see an anaconda, I'll know not to mess with it. Huh? Hero? What's that? It's long and green. Do you think it's an, an anaconda? anaconda? Hang on, Hero. We'll save you from that garden hose. <laughs> Hero! Hero! <laughs> Good job, children! You are amazing wildlife rangers!